Let us take a boat too, a luxury liner to Africa's most exciting seaport, the palm-fringed harbor of Dar es Salaam, which in English means the haven of peace. Peace, sailing over sheltered waters three miles long or fishing for big barracuda off the coast. Peace, setting out for a swim in Oyster Bay. Such peace, you forget that this is the tradesman's entrance to that one territory, which in fact is the whole of Africa in a nutshell, Tanganyika, the land of new industrial opportunity and age-old ways of life. It's hard to realize there are snow-capped mountains a motor ride away from this tropical market, but lions roam free not many miles away. You've got all the color, all the contrasts of Africa here, happily with the exception of one thing, racial clashes and discord. There's harmony in Tanganyika. What's this, pineapples? No, a sisal plantation. They dry off those spiky leaves to produce the stringy fiber that goes to make rope and binder twine. It's their biggest export and it goes in ever greater quantities to almost every country you can name. You can tie the whole world up in knots if you produce this exotic crop with such humdrum uses as Tanganyika does on plantations which are all self-contained communities, each with at least a thousand people working there. Don't let those elegant earrings mislead you. Those are Maasai warriors, once the most warlike of tribes. Today they live peacefully with their old enemies, the original Arab settlers on the coast. So let's leave them and go on safari with an aeroplane of all civilized things to take us to a place where life is still savage and wild. Here in the highlands, we can hire a white hunter who will take us into the big game reserves teeming with giraffe herds, elephants, great zoos without wires where nature is as raw as it can be. Now who's having a bubble bath? Why, if it isn't Harry the Hippopotamus? Sticking his neck out and asking to be shot, as they all do, with a camera, of course. That clock is precisely halfway between Cairo and the Cape of Good Hope. This is Arusha, the capital of the northern province, high on the slopes of Mount Meru and away from the humid heat you get on the tropical coast. This is the stepping stone to Africa's fairyland of magical mountain scenery, itself a blend of everything that is picturesque and positively lush. Honeymoon Hotel, by the look of things. And what more appropriate place could you find for setting out to climb? The most romantic mountains in Africa that flank the cratered plains where you find the great game reserves. No other place on Earth has such a variety of thrills so easily at hand, so easily available. You want to climb a mountain? Don't worry, you're well over halfway there before you leave the rest camp you reached by motor car. All you've got ahead is a gentle trek over the foothills to Africa's loveliest view, Kilimanjaro. The final climb is far from difficult, but let's make it easier still and go by air. Snow in the tropics, glaciers on a mountain range crossing the equator. Africa's highest and loveliest mountain is now just one more unforgettable memory you can take home with you. And there, Africa's unbelievable crown, Kilimanjaro's ice-decked crater to dazzle your eyes and dominate your memories. Thank you.